hello there. I'm Rosie, the camp director at Miss Quinzella, This Quinn, Penny Quill, Thistle, Crumpets, Camp for Girls. Ugh, excuse me, Camp for Hardcore Lady Types, where we are gearing up for the best summer ever. I'd like to introduce you to some of my favorite campers, the Lumberjane Scouts of the Roanoke Cabin. First up is Jo. She's our resident smarty pants. She talked her dads out of robotics camp so that she could spend one last summer getting her questing on as a Lumberjane Scout. You have a puzzle that needs solving or a code that needs cracking? Math Whiz Joe is your go-to person. Next up is my girl April. April is tiny but fierce in all senses of the world. She's the one if you, you want if you get gum in your hair and you need a super awesome haircut or if you need someone super strong to beat up that massive stone giant that's chasing you. Then there's Molly. Molly is the steadiest Lumberjane. She's always there when she's needed. She's an awesome archer with a cool head on her shoulders and in a lot of ways, she's the glue of the group. That raccoon you see her wearing, that's alive. And its name is Bubbles. Our fourth Lumberjane is Ripley, who is almost literally a loose cannon. Like the girls will actually just like throw her at their enemies and their incessant energy renders them powerless. I think Ripley might also be the world's number one kitten enthusiast. Last, we have Mal. Mal's tough kind of punk exterior belies a very introspective and sensitive personality. She's the planner of the group, though her plans often seem to go wrong somehow. So those are our Lumberjanes. I'll let them describe their first quest in their own words. We can explain. There was this bear woman. And we followed her because duh, bear woman. And then there were these foxes, but they were magic foxes. And we beat the stuffing out of those guys. Even though that wasn't the plan. And those foxes, well, they had a very weird message for our Lumberjanes. Beware the kitten holy. But like, what does that even mean? In their epic quest to find the bear woman, the Lumberjanes will encounter secret caves, stone giants, hipster yetis, and some boy scouts that are acting really strange. If you want to join me in the Lumberjanes at my fabulous camp, check out the Lumberjanes Beware the Kitten Holy by Stevenson, Ellis, Waters, and Allen, ASAP. Mom, what if I'm a girl? When people look at George, they think they see a boy, but she knows she's not a boy. She knows she's a girl. She knows there are other girls like her who are born a boy or assigned boy at birth, but later transition through hormones, surgeries, and lifestyle into girlhood. George is a transgender girl who someday would like to be called Melissa. But right now she's George, and her school is putting on a play of Charlotte's Web. It'd be amazing if she could be Charlotte. Then she could show her friends, her family, and her school that she really is a girl. But her teacher tells her no, because she sees George as a boy. That doesn't stop her, and with the help of her friend Kelly, George finds a way to be Charlotte and to tell the world who she is once and for all. So if you like heartwarming stories, read George by Alex Gino. 35 girls, one crown, the competition of a lifetime. In the kingdom of Aaliyah, formerly known as the United States, there is one event that people from all eight castes, from the supremely wealthy ones to the lower than dirt eights, look forward to. When a royal family member comes of age, the selection, a broadcasted dating event, occurs, and the Prince of Aaliyah will choose his princess. 35 girls between the ages of 16 and 20 are randomly drawn in a lottery and a chance to become the next true princess of Aaliyah and marry the crown prince, Max and Tree. Meet America Singer. America is 17 years old. She has fiery red hair and ice blue eyes. She's a musician from the fifth cast in Carolina, putting the odds somewhat out of her favor. She likes to dress simply and is a favorite among the people for winning the crown. But does she have what it takes to beat out 34 contestants? Check out The Selection by Kira Cass. Abracadabra, the story of magic through the ages by H.P. Newquist. Magic has served to surprise, delight, and entertain people throughout the ages. If a trick is well performed, we often wonder how a magician made it happen. In this book, the history of magic is explained through various magicians. Here's the story of one you may recognize. There once was a man fascinated by electricity and all the probabilities it could offer for inexpensive and clean energy. Nikola Tesla was born in what is now modern-day Croatia in the year 1856. He came to the United States when he was 27 years old and worked for another scientist named Thomas Edison. By the time he reached the age of 40, Tesla had a better understanding of electricity than anyone else. He parted ways with Edison after Edison refused to pay some money he owed him. 
He struck out on his own and in the year 1899, decided to move out west to a little town called Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs was known to have many lightning storms and Tesla thought it would be a great location to build his laboratory. He set it up not too far from what is now known as the Union Printer's home. Back in the day, this was the edge of town. One night, his lab lit up with the glare of electricity. Suddenly, lightning bolts shot hundreds of feet into the air. Just as suddenly, all the power in Colorado Springs disappeared. His experiment had zapped the city's electrical generation system for the entire city, and only he could fix it. To this day, no one knows how Tesla achieved this. He was asked by the city officials to leave, so he closed up shop and moved back to New York. Included in this book are eight magic tricks that are guaranteed to surprise and delight your audience and not make them run you out of town. Have you ever wondered how food heating radio boxes work? Or how the US space team's Upgoer 5 made it to the moon? Thing Explainer is a project by Randall Monroe, a former NASA roboticist and the author of the webcomic XKCD, a comic of math, science, and romance. Thing Explainer explains complicated scientific concepts using only the 1,000, 10 hundred, most common words in the English language. So your organs become the bags of stuff inside you, and a helicopter becomes a skyboat with turning wings. The idea is that if you truly understand something, you can break it down into simple enough words for anyone to understand. Can you guess what these things are? And we'll start off with something simple. Boxes that make clothes smell better. Did you guess? It's a washing machine. The next one's a little harder. The shared space house. It's the International Space Station. All right, tall roads. Did you guess bridges? Last one, the tiny bags of water that you're made of. They're your cells. Thing Explainer is written with Monroe's usual sarcastic sense of humor, and it includes lighter comics and witty asides along with the more in-depth diagrams and explanations. Clearly labeled, funny, and informative, Thing Explainer is a must-read that will help explain things to even the least science-minded among us. So Becca, so Corey, have you ever had a burning desire to know what color dining chair you would be if you were indeed a dining chair? Basically my whole life. Perfect, <laughs> you're gonna find out today. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna ask you a series of questions and then we will find out at the end. Cheese or trees? Um, cheese. Would you skydive? No. Would you survive the zombie apocalypse? Absolutely not, like first one dead. <laughs> Do flies have feelings? I don't think so. All right, you are the green chair. Oh. Dan and Phil don't have enough friends to fill their entire dining table, so you are the outsider of the group. You are at one with nature and animals lovely. Love you. <laughs> you frequently talk to yourself and have a lot of creativity. You'd prefer a movie night with your best friend to a boat ride. You'd be a great zookeeper, hamster breeder, or dolphin psychiatrist, but unfortunately, chairs can't swim, so you'll just have to go back to being never sat on. <laughs> so. That is a quiz that I took from The Amazing Book is Not on Fire by Dan and Phil, for any of you YouTube fans out there. It's full of a lot of fun quizzes, fun stories, drawings, um, a conversation about the time they met One Direction. So if you're into YouTubing, if you want to start your own YouTube channel, or you just want to have a lot of fun, check out The Amazing Book is Not on Fire by Dan and Phil, which is also a really great audiobook. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there lived a beautiful princess whose father was completely obsessed with declaring an heir to the throne. In order to find the best heir, he had his seven daughters locked away in seven different towers, guarded by seven different beasts. There, these girls would wait until their Prince Charming would come rescue them. <sighs> nah, we've heard this story and it's lame. Princess Adrienne is tired of waiting to be rescued. Luck would have it that someone left her a sword which she learns to wield. She quickly figures out a plan to get out of her tower and find out where her sisters are being held. Along with her plucky sidekick Bedelia and her guardian dragon Sparky, she sets off to rescue her sisters in this graphic novel where Prince Charming can go climb a tree while the princess saves the day. If you're looking for fun, action, and adventure in a graphic novel, read Princeless by Jeremy Whitley. 
Okay, so I want y'all to raise your hands if you have read the Percy Jackson series or seen any of the movies. I have. So um, what kind of mythology was that about? Just say it. Greek. It's Greek mythology, right? So the author, Rick Riordan, has a few other books out, a few other series out. Some are about Roman mythology, some are about Egyptian mythology. The one I'm talking to you about today is about Norse mythology. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you 20 seconds to name as many Norse gods as you can. Go. Somebody probably came up with Thor, I hope, because Thor is a Norse god. So there's a lot of Norse gods, actually. So there's Loki, and there's Odin, and there's Frey, and Freya, and a ton of other ones that I don't have time to name here. So that's what this book is about. So it's about like a human person with a god for a father. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and read you some of the first chapter. So the first chapter is called, Good Morning, You're Going to Die. Yeah, I know. You're going to read about how I died in agony, and you're going to be like, wow, that sounds cool, Magnus. Can I die in agony too? No. Just no. Don't go running off any rooftops. Don't run into the highway or set yourself on fire. It does not work that way. Besides, you would not want to end up where I ended up. Unless you have some crazy desire to see undead warriors hacking one another to pieces, swords going up giant's noses, or dark elves in snappy outfits, then you do not want to find the wolf-headed doors. My name is Magnus Chase. I'm 16 years old, and this is how my life went downhill after I got myself killed. So the book is The Sword of Summer. It's by, like I said earlier, Rick Riordan. It's part of a series called The Gods of Asgard. The second book in the series, The Hammer of Thor, is also out, and it's, I think, even better than the first one. It actually won this really big award called the Stonewall Award for its a portrayal of a gender-fluid character. So check them both out. You won't be disappointed. The Sword of Summer by Rick Riordan. On Marin's Island, sunrise doesn't come every 24 hours. It comes every 28 years. Dawn brings day after day of gentle light. Noon is years of scorching sun that never sets. But twilight is when the sun is just a sliver of light on the horizon. The weather is turning cold and the shadows are growing long. Soon night will come and the entire island will be iced over. Nothing living will survive. Marin and her twin brother, Kena, help their anxious parents ready the house for departure. Everything must be clean. Locks must be taken off doors. Furniture must be arranged. Tables must be set. The rituals are puzzling, bizarre even, but none of the adults in town will discuss why it has to be done this way. Because sunset triggers the tide to roll out hundreds of miles, the islanders are frantically preparing to sail south to the desert lands with the furrier ships, where they will wait out the long night. Just as the ships are about to sail, a teenage boy goes missing, the twins' friend Line. Marin and Kana are the only ones who know the truth about where Line's gone, and the only way to rescue him is by doing it themselves. But night is falling, their island is changing, and it may already be too late. Find out what happens in Nightfall by Jake Halpern. If you're anything like me, when you read Romeo and Juliet for the first time, you thought, you know what would really spice this story up? Dinosaurs. Well, I have the perfect book for you. Kenneth Opal's Every Hidden Thing tells the story of two rival fossil hunters racing to discover the king of the dinosaurs, the T-Rex and their children, Rachel and Samuel, who are caught in between and end up discovering a little bit more than dinosaur bones. Samuel's father thinks Professor Cartland is a pompous snob who's never experienced the world outside of a university campus, while Professor Cartland thinks Samuel's father is an uneducated ruffian who is better suited to manual labor than the scientific analysis of dinosaur fossils. Imagine their surprise when they somehow find themselves on the same train headed for the badlands of Wyoming. They both assume the other is there to steal their glory and assign their children to spy on each other. Told from the alternating perspectives of Rachel and Samuel, we see as they try to balance loyalty to their fathers, their growing feelings for each other, and the dangerous landscape where they find themselves. How will they break the news to their fathers? And who will be the first to find the T-Rex? Check out every hidden thing to find out.